European markets traded with little appetite as the US markets were off yesterday. French CAC 40 remained under pressure while the British FTSE 100 index eked out a small gain despite a stronger British pound ahead of today's Bank of England decision. What will the Bank of England do now that inflation in Britain hit the 2% policy target? Well, probably nothing. So welcome, this is Swiss Co's Daily Market Talk. So appetite in Europe was weak yesterday in the absence of American traders as they were off for just one day on Wednesday and obviously in the midst of ongoing political uncertainties in France. So the French CAC 40 index remained firmly over the nearest 200 day moving average and fell 0.77% yesterday. The European stock 600 index retreated 0.17% and the Swiss SMI index consolidated above the 12,000 mark while the FTSE 100 took out the 50 day moving average resistance and closed the session slightly higher at yesterday's trading session. Now, of course, the French political risks remain on the headlines in Europe and many, many investors out there are still reluctant to go back to the French and European stock indices at the current discounted prices because they have good exposure to France ahead of the legislative election that's coming up in France as they actually fear that a victory for Marine Le Pen's national rally could further hit valuations at least in the short run. But the European stock valuations remain attractive as they are way cheaper than the US peers mind you and some investors already make a parallel between France and Italy, which also saw its assets hit by Meloni's rise to power as Mario Draghi had resigned, remember, and point that in fine, well, Meloni has successfully kept investors in check and Italy finally ended up being fine. So we will see what happens. Anyway, in the energy markets, crude oil consolidated gains yesterday above the $80 per barrel psychological level and remains supported by this positive trend wise since it stepped into the medium term bullish consolidation zone. That was after it cleared the major 38.2% Fibonacci resistance on April to June, well, remember. The geopolitical tensions, the tight OPEC supply, the rising summer fuel demand and reflation appetite are among these factors that support this oil rally, while a high US and non-OPEC oil production and a potential weakness in reflation inflows are the major risks to the actual positive formation in crude oil prices. So the next crucial resistance stands at the $82 per barrel level, which is the major 61.8% Fibonacci retracement that will either call the end of the latest positive push or confirm the strength of the actual rally. But I believe that there is more chance that we see the first scenario unfold rather than the second one. So I expect the $82 per barrel level act as a strong resistance. Now, on the central bank's front, the day will bring three important monetary policy announcements on top of China's earlier today. China maintained its rates unchanged today at record lows as expected and the People's Bank of China signaled a new toolkit that could actually allow the Chinese central bankers to start buying government bonds, which would be a new way of injecting liquidity into the Chinese markets, a method that's become very, very popular among the Western central banks, of course, so much in fact that the Federal Reserve still holds more than 7 trillion US dollar worth of assets on its balance sheet and will probably never ever unwind its holdings to pre-pandemic and pre-financial crisis, GFC crisis levels. But alas, the Chinese CSI index continues to be offered into its 200-day moving average as the PBOC refrained from cutting its interest rates this week. And Hang Seng index in Hong Kong gave back a part of yesterday's strong gains. Taiwan's TIEX, on the other hand, was also a bit slower this morning. However, the index extended gains to a fresh all-time high level this week as TSM, which is NVIDIA's main advanced chip supplier, hit a fresh record after major US banks, including Goldman Sachs, 
Citigroup and Morgan Stanley lifted their price target for the company on the back of robust AI demand, of course, and potential price hikes in 2025 that could boost the company's revenue. So the company is now worth close to 1 trillion US dollar in market capitalization and is worth more than Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway. Just saying. Anyway, as I was saying before in this episode, we have three more important policy decisions to go today. The Norges Bank, the Swiss National Bank and the Bank of England will also be announcing their latest monetary policy verdicts today. Now, I'm a bit annoyed to be true to you because I can't comment on the Swiss National Bank's decision as the show is done and dusted at the time while well, they announce their monetary policy decision and the episode is, well, already published. But, but the expectations for the SNB differ from poll to poll right now. The consensus on a Bloomberg survey, for example, hints at no change in rates today in Switzerland, while a poll from Reuters suggests a 25 base point cut to 1.25% level following a 25 base point cut from the ECB earlier this month. Now, the dollar franc cleared the all-important 200-day moving average support this week and a major Fibonacci support as well and slipped into the bearish consolidation zone. And the euro franc fell to the lowest levels that we saw since February this year. But obviously, the fall is also and mostly due to the French political jitters. But anyway... A potential rate cut from the Swiss National Bank today could eventually slow and maybe also stop the Swiss franc's appreciation, especially, especially against the greenback, and send the dollar franc back to a bullish consolidation path. And I think that a 25 base point cut from the Swiss National Bank would make sense as the SNB has a margin on the inflation front to make this move and support the Swiss economy. For the Bank of England, however, it's a bit more complicated because yesterday's CPI release showed that the headline inflation in the United Kingdom fell to the Bank of England's 2% monetary policy target and well, the UK ended up being against all odds at this time last year, remember, the first nation among comparable peers to make this achievement. Yet, yet two things worry the Bank of England watchers and the BOE does and slow down the rate cut expectations for England. First is the fact that well, the services inflation remains high in England, perhaps too high, near 6% level to let the Bank of England cut its rates with a peace of mind as services make up around 80% of the British economy. And second, well, it is said that Consumer prices in Britain could rapidly rebound if natural gas market tightens as traders rush to replace and replenish their stockpiles before winter as natural gas prices are rising. So, for many out there, if the Bank of England doesn't announce a rate cut today, it is not necessarily because they don't want to put their nose into the country's political affairs with the upcoming general election in the UK, but it's well, mostly because the underlying inflationary factors in the UK are not yet convincing enough to allow them to do so. So cable remains upbeat on the back of a swift retreat in Bank of England rate cut expectations yesterday after the services inflation view and despite the upcoming election. And note that I don't say election uncertainty for Britain because, well, the conservatives in the UK are pretty much certain to come out of this upcoming general election well weakened and well, it doesn't really seem to bother investors in the UK or internationally following Brexit pandemic, list trust, and energy crisis. Some of these factors are not fully conservative's fault, obviously, but some disasters could have been avoided. But at the end of the day, what we see today is that well, investors seem quite happy with the labor taking over the reins in the UK. Voila. And the market's heavier reaction to French snap election than to the UK's snap general election will actually allow the Brits to enjoy the beautiful Mediterranean beaches this summer at cheaper prices. Nowhere as cheap as before Brexit, obviously, but cheaper still. So this is all for 
today. I'm Ipek Özkardeş Gaya and thank you for joining me and thank you for all your beautiful and supportive comments. I hope this episode of Market Talk has been helpful and it has been insightful to you. So please do not hesitate to leave your comments, your reactions and your questions below as usual. Follow us on Instagram, on X and on LinkedIn for regular market updates. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily market comments. And please, please don't forget to hit the like button on these videos to let us know that you enjoy them. So I will meet you again tomorrow. And until then, good day trading.